Let's talk about how irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, may not be quite what you thought it was. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume that you have IBS, or you're watching on behalf of someone who's got it. And so you likely know that IBS is a difficult, tricky issue because it has a lot of urgent diarrhea associated, sometimes so urgent it keep, keeps people from engaging in social situations, uh, like going to someone's house or a party uh, or a restaurant or just driving because of the urgency of, of bowel movements. There's also excessive uh, gas and bloating. Some people, a minority, have constipation, while others have a mixture of both diarrhea and constipation. And this condition, this socially awkward and sometimes painful condition, is treated with drugs such as antispasm drugs, anti-diarrheal drugs, and new drugs that uh, reduce the amount of water in the colon or reduce the amount, the, the speed at which f um, digestive byproducts are passed through the colon. And these new drugs are very toxic and, and expensive too. But they have side effects like autoimmune pancreatitis and even what's called bowel ischemia, where part of your colon typically dies and you have to have emergency surgery to remove uh, part or all of the colon and get an ileostomy bag. Nasty, really nasty side effects. And none of them address the cause. They're just fancy band-aids for some of the symptoms. That's all they do. Now, some of the newest evidence in, in, in IBS suggests that at least half of people with IBS, at least 50%, it may be a lot higher, it could be 70, 80, perhaps even 100%, but at least 50% of people with I, labeled as IBS really have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or we say SIBO, S-I-B-O. And what that means, if you haven't watched my several videos on SIBO, and I invite you to do so, or, or even better, subscribe to my channel. But SIBO is a condition where microorganisms, typically confined to the colon, the large bowel, have ascended up through the many feet of ileum, jejunum, duodenum, and stomach. Now it means 30 feet of bacteria, of high nut counts of bacteria, of unhealthy species like E. coli and Campylobacter. And these make you very ill. They cause body-wide inflammation. It can be uh, reflected as IBS, or it could even show up as fibromyalgia, which is a very uh, common way that SIBO shows itself. Restless leg syndrome. It could tip the odds in favor of having uh, an autoimmune condition like rheumatoid arthritis, or can make an autoimmune condition worse. It can make inflammatory bowel disease, also the colitis and Crohn's disease, worse. So having SIBO is very important to recognize, but it can show up as IBS. And that's why there are more and more studies telling us that one of the ways to treat uh, IBS is to give you antibiotics of the sort that eradicate the SIBO organisms. Now, uh, uh, it's not always effective, but there's, there are a number of things you can do to stack the odds in favor of a positive response. But the key here is to recognize if you've been labeled or someone close to you has been labeled with IBS, think about SIBO. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I could tell you that most of my primary care colleagues and gastroenterologists have kept up with the science and you ask them, they'll say, oh, of course, here's what you do. 95% of the time they'll say, I've never heard of that, or it's not your problem, don't worry about it. Did you uh, consult Dr. Google? Uh, I went to medical school, did you? Those kinds of nasty, con that's more than likely. And that's one of the reasons why, by the way, in our undoctored inner circle, we help you learn how to do this on your own. But in a nutshell, if you think, if you have IBS and you suspect may have SIBO, because there's at least a 50-50 chance, confirm it. And one way to confirm it is look for telltale signs. And I have a separate video about that, but in brief, Telltale signs that really strongly suggest SIBO would be intolerance to prebiotic fibers. In other words, you add a prebiotic fiber, uh, as I talk about in my books and blogs, such as a raw white potato cut crudely, coarsely into a salad, or a green unripe banana cut coarsely and put into a smoothie or a shake, or inulin powder, or legumes like uh, kidney beans, black beans, white beans, chickpeas, hummus. If you consume any one of those prebiotic fibers and you have an ex a, a adverse reaction, such as excessive gas, diarrhea, bloating, joint pain, even anxiety or dark depressive thoughts, emotional effects, if that happens within the first hour of consuming a prebiotic fiber, it's virtually certain you have SIBO. 
And because it tells you the, the microorganisms have ascended up high and you respond very quickly to consume that prebiotic fiber that is consumed by bacteria. Another very powerful telltale sign is fat malabsorption. And you can recognize fat malabsorption by looking in the toilet after a bowel movement. And if you see a rim of staining around the edges, uh, that's fat or fat or oil droplets. That almost always is SIBO. Now, there are other ways to identify and, and uh, confirm whether you have SIBO, but one really cool way is there's a new device that hooks via Bluetooth to your smartphone called an AIR device, A-I-R-E. By the way, I have no relationship with the company. I just think it's a cool tool. And it's a game changer for identification and for management of SIBO. It's very easy to use, talks to your smartphone, tells you right away whether you have um, excessive hydrogen gas released by bacteria. Uh, 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 in your um, in your gastrointestinal tract. Now, unfortunately, the company only talks about how to use this device as a FODMAPS maneuvering device to reduce symptoms of FODMAPS consumption, that is, sugars and prebiotic fibers. Uh, so consult the blog, my wheat belly blog and undoctored blog, on how to use the air device as a SIBO detecting device instead. So those are three ways to identify or confirm whether you have SIBO. And if you do, then you should think about antibiotics. But now we have two regimens of herbal antibiotics that we know are effective. We've been using in our undoctored inner circle experience with great success. We also take additional steps, such as adding a biofilm disruptor, such as N-acetylcysteine, to the regimen to increase the effectiveness of your, of your regimen. And one of the problems with SIBO is recurrence. SIBO loves to recur, so we take steps to prevent recurrence. We look for fungal overgrowth. We introduce a high-potency multi-species probiotic. We encourage enthusiastic consumption of fermented foods, and we add back the prebiotic fibers, and we use our lactobacillus roteri yogurt, a half cup per day, because that has the unique capacity to colonize the upper gastrointestinal tract. And lactobacillus roteri is an avid producer of something called a bacteriosins, which are natural antibiotics effective against the organisms of SIBO. So a bit complicated, I know, but bottom line, if you have IBS and your doctor has not talked to you about SIBO or the use of antibiotics and all the other things you can do about it, start thinking about SIBO. Take a look at my Wheat Belly blog. Uh, take a look at the other videos I have on YouTube about SIBO and IBS. Take a look at my undoctored blog, uh, as well as if you really want to go uh, deep dive into this, uh, take a look at the undoctored inner circle where we have two-way video conversations to help you manage these kinds of issues.